Falklands Conservation's three-year peat wetlands project is now into its second year, with the mission of gathering up data of these important habitats well underway. Collecting more scientific research is essential to understand historic damage to these vulnerable areas of land, and ultimately provide an idea of how they can be best managed for wildlife and people. After trialling data collection methods in year one, the first surveys of the season were ready to take place in West Falkland by Conservation's Peat Wetlands Officer, David Higgins. Day one of the trip consisted of travelling to the Fox Bay settlements, setting up key pieces of surveying kits, and taking the first invertebrate samples of the season at Lynn Blake Nature Reserve, ahead of a busy day two. The second day started out with a long and bumpy off-road drive to Long Mountain, a picturesque spot on Lake Sullivan Farm. The plan for day two was to complete the bulk of the data collection from the trip to the west. So we've travelled in past um, Lake Sullivan and turned the corner and come into this habitat which is a, a really, really nice machine. White grass matrix, lots of ferns in here, lots of orchids, um, pearl maidens and a few other species. With initial impressions of the chosen survey site positive, the first job would to be accurately log each plant species in a measured out zone, which, when analysed, will help understanding and characterisation of the environment. So the first thing we did was set up the X-plots, which is a, a really large quadrat, and we split that quadrat into different sections. And in the first section, which is four metres squared, we record all the plants, and then as we go out, we record all the plants we haven't seen in the preceding sections. The Falkland Islands have the highest proportion of peat wetland cover of any part of the UK and overseas territories. Helping to improve understanding of these areas and carry out the Long Mountain surveys were the site's landowners, Leon Marsh and his family, and Emily Teslin Barkman. The land is changing quick, I think. You know, just drying out and stuff, whether we're getting, or well, I think the Met Office say we are getting the same amount of rain as we've had, but I think the winds and maybe the temperature slightly warmer and stuff it seems to be drying out a lot quicker and doesn't seem to be replenishing over the winter, especially last winter. Some of the lakes haven't filled up like they should have done. And we actually brought David out last summer to show him the area and, and stuff, and he was keen with his project. You, know, you take all this sort of stuff in, and it's all of interest to us and you know, helpful to everybody, hopefully. After the plant surveys were complete, which included the discovery of a grass wren nest, tests were carried out on the land soil property. We took some soil depth and we used the penetrometer here as well to see if there was any compaction. Unsurprisingly on this slope there wasn't any compaction, it's not heavily grazed and there's, there's no vehicles moving up and down this or footfall really. So that this, this was a really nice deep peat really for a, for a slope of this kind. A soil sample was taken to help work out moisture, carbon content and bulk density when tested in a lab at a later date, whilst time-lapse cameras will follow the movement of the flowers over a series of months. We came across this area with, uh, with all the types of different orchids within this valley here and we were quite intrigued to see how they develop and grow on and stuff and they're really quite rare, these ones that we were, we were wanting to film, so it'd be good. The other thing we did was use the leaf blower again with the vacuum attachment basically to hoover up the invertebrates. We did that in a small quadrat and we did five 20 second goes at that. I've bagged up all the leaf litter and we're hoping there's more invertebrates in that than we found yesterday. I'm seeing lots of little spiders as we walk around, so I'm, I'm expecting to get a good return from here and especially when you look at the habitat, it's really species rich in terms of the plants. All that was left in day two was a bird survey, and then the bulk of data collection was complete. Day three wrapped up the trip with a short study of the Patricia Luxton Nature Reserve, whilst also providing an ideal spot to reflect on the initial takeouts of the season's first surveys. There's, there's two things we can't do our project without. One is the funding from Darwin Plus, and two is the permission from landowners to access the land, so I want to thank everybody for that. It was a really good trip. We did the full surveys there and we set up the time-lapse cameras. We also, the surveys themselves probably came out with the highest plant diversity of anywhere I've surveyed up to now. We used the vacuum sampler for the first time. Uh, we took soil depths and we also did a, a bird survey. 
So for the start of the survey season, it was, it was a really good place to start. We had lots of diversity, lots of interest. It feels good that we're getting out and doing the habitat surveys all around the islands, but it, the thing that feels particularly good is the permissions we're getting from the landowners to let us access their land. And as I said, without that, we couldn't do the work we're doing. David will now continue to survey across the Falklands until March of next year, before final survey season and laboratory analysis will commence later in the year.